So um, I don't know if Washington can win a national championship, but uh, what a showcase of game it was for the Huskies. Uh, I said their defense is bad, but at least they're usually in the right place. USC fired Alex Grinch, their defensive coordinator, which, I mean, if you watch the game and if you've watched the last month, he stands alone by himself in the sidelines. They're in the wrong place. And these are guys that have played. Kalen Bullock, who is at All-American safety, has regressed. One of the first things I look at is, do players get better? USC's offensive guys do. None of their defensive guys do. None of them get better. So I don't know if USC will go out um, and spend a lot of money on the defensive coordinator, but how do you view this season and Lincoln Riley's sort of uh, legacy? I know it's early in his career to talk about that, but I always viewed him as potentially an NFL guy. And, and my takeaway now is he's not. He just has no – McVay, chest out, alpha, loves defense. Shanahan loves physicality. Shanahan don't care about special teams. <laughs> he loves defense, right? Yeah. Andy Reid. Spags, Andy accept, realizes what defense is. Lincoln doesn't even, he doesn't have a special teams coach. He's lopsided as a coach. What do you think his legacy right now is? Well, I, I think, and listen, I, I, it, it's easy to crush him right now. Like probably most people, when they hired him, it was a no-brainer hire. You had to do it. But I think when you look back, the Big 12 is not very good. And no one plays defense, and he was able to take advantage of it. He ran into clearly the best year the Pac-12 has had in a long time. He's kind of getting worked, right? He loses to Utah. He loses this game. He's going to be a huge underdog this upcoming week, you know, to Oregon. UCLA is leaking oil a little bit, but I think it's a disaster, Colin. Simply put, I think it's one of the biggest underachievements given the quarterback play in offense because when you're at a program like this, you have unlimited resources to hire the best and the brightest. You know, yeah. when you look at some of these other college coaches, they go to like the Baltimore Ravens and get their secondary coach and make them, you know, their defensive coordinator. Do hell, uh, Chip Kelly's defensive coordinator is Anthony Lynn's son, who, if you look at his resume, had been in the NFL for the last decade, came from the Ravens. And what is UCLA? Yeah. A lot better on defense. So it's like, I, I don't know. If you tell me who Lincoln's next defensive coordinator, I, I would not be very confident that you're going to go, that's a no brainer choice, right? Because you look at the guys that his. We talked about it last week when they were, you know, lose to Utah. Where'd he find this guy? Well, he was a Mike Leach guy, right? That's it's it's a connection thing, and he's not to me part of going to the NFL too. Think of some of the the coaches that went to the NFL from college most recently, beside Harbaugh, who was an NFL guy. Urban Meyer never coached a day, didn't know what to do, and he was completely over his head. Chip is a good example of a guy that had some success, but his problem is he didn't know any defensive coaches. Right. So he couldn't hire very good defensive coordinators, and that was always his downfall. And now Lincoln is kind of going through this in college. And I go back to Pete Carroll era. Pete Carroll's staff was really, really good. It had a perfect yeah. blend of like young up-and-coming guys, like the Sarks and the Lanes, and then the older Norm Chows, Ken Nortons, the recruiters, the NFL experience, the young offensive innovative guys. And I just look, I go, I don't know. I mean, because when he took over at Oklahoma, it was Bob Stoops' brother. And he inherited him. Then ultimately fired him for this guy and it's just kind of unraveled and he brings them with him. I don't have much confidence that he's going to hire a guy that people are going to feel very, very good about. Cause I also think it's a culture in the way you practice when you practice like he does with his offensive style, you don't really create a tough physicality. That's always what people have said. Defensive coaches, whenever you met them at these spread offense schools and specifically the air raid type schools, and I know he's not true air raid anymore, it's like hard to uh, improve the toughness on a daily basis on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in practice. Listen, we've all had fender benders in our life. Sometimes it's even more serious, but even if it's somebody else's mistake, you can lean on Morgan and Morgan. It's the nation's largest injury law firm, 100 offices and over 800 lawyers. With over 15 billion, that's a B billion dollars recovered. Morgan and Morgan has a proven track record of fighting for you to get full and fair compensation. Submit an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan. It's really, really easy. It's almost like a quarterback, an offensive head coach, and a GM that gets some good weapons makes their life easier. We all need somebody, good or bad days, to make our life a little easier. That's what Morgan & Morgan does. If you're ever injured, check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Colin or dial pound L-A-W, that's pound 529, from your cell phone. This is a paid advertisement.
No, I mean, I, it's, I don't think it's a coincidence. Tomlin, Dan Campbell, Mike Vrabel, I think the essence of their physicality, the essence of their personality, the way they structure practice is more physical. I mean, every Vrabel team, every Tomlin team, every, every, I mean, even though they're an offensive team more than defense, Dan Campbell, it's a physical offense. They can run the ball. Is I, th- I think I think sometimes with Mike McDaniel and Lincoln Riley, I think they're really clever offensively and really smart. And I think they structure their culture and their program and their practice like that. Yeah. And it's really smart and clever. But do they build the toughness? Is that part of the personality? And I just I don't think it's a coincidence sometimes that the the same kind of physical, kind of big physical men. Don't you think they they structure practice differently? I, I, yeah, for sure. I, and I'm not blaming Caleb because you, you got to sign Caleb. You had to pay Caleb to get him. Every team in the country would have done that. But I do think when the way they built it, it was all so Caleb heavy that yeah. it almost sucked the oxygen out of everything else. And you watch it this year, and he, the last couple of weeks haven't been his fault. The Notre Dame game, he wasn't very good. But you, it just feels like if he is not, because even you go back to the, some of the heyday Pete Carroll teams or some of those good Harbaugh teams or Chip Kelly teams, it was never all about Mariota or Luck or Matt Liner. It was a it, they were more complete team. And this thing just felt like a basketball team. It was like Caleb Williams and then everyone else. And that is not the way you win in football. It's just not. And they've been clearly exposed. Even Washington is a good example. Their best players are quarterback, but they don't. He he wasn't. I would say otherworldly against USC. Running back came through. Defense got some big stops. You watch Oregon; they're a complete team. Look at what Nick Saban's doing. It, you talk to any NFL scout; they're like, "This is the least talented team in like 15 years." All of a sudden, he's going to be back in the SEC championship game. Right? Yeah, and I and I think Mike McDaniel and Lincoln Riley. I do think they're brilliant guys, but For both sure. are regressing quickly as the season goes on. This sport always gets back to physicality and toughness and resilience and playing hurt and situational football and making stops. As much fun as it is to watch Caleb or Tua or or Tyreek Hill. Just got to be better and more physical situationally. And I mean, they had a goal line stand. USC did. They must have had six safeties and corners on the field. It's like, guys, it's like a track Too small. team. I know. Too small. All right, John Middlecoff, former NFL scout. Great as always, buddy. Appreciate it. Have a good week, Colin. See you.